Bunny by Margaret Wise Brown. <clears throat> Once there was a little bunny who wanted to run away, so he said to his mother, I am running away. If you run away, said his mother, I will run after you, for you are my little bunny. If you run after me, said the little bunny, I will become a fish in a trout stream, and I will swim away from you. If you become a fish in a trout stream, said his mother, I will become a fisherman, and I will fish for you. If you become a fisherman, said the little bunny, I will become a rock on the mountain high above me. <coughs> if you become a rock on the mountain high above me, said his mother, I will be a mountain climber, and I will climb to where you are. If you become a mountain climber, said the little bunny, I will be a crocus in a hidden garden. If you become a crocus in a hidden garden, said his mother, I will be a gardener, and I will find you. If you are a gardener and find me, said the little bunny, I will be a bird and fly away from you. If you become a bird and fly away from me, said his mother, I will be a tree that you come home to. If you become a tree, said the little bunny, I will become a little sailboat, and I will sail away from you. If you become a sailboat and sail away from me, said his mother, I will become the wind and blow you where I want you to go. If you become the wind and blow me, said the little bunny, I will join a circus and fly away on a flying trapeze. If you go flying on a flying trapeze, said his mother, I will be a tightrope walker, and I will walk across the air to you. If you become a tightrope walker and walk across the air, said the little bunny, I will become a little boy and run into a house. If you become a little boy and run into a house, said the mother bunny, I will become your mother and catch you in my arms and hug you. Shucks, said the little bunny. <laughs> I might just as well stay where I am and be your little bunny. <laughs> and so he did. Have a carrot, said the mother bunny. These days, it's considered a compliment to be considered relentless. We use that term to denote utter determination in an admirable way, or at least sort of admirable. The professor who makes absolute certain that every student does the assigned readings by whatever means necessary is relentless. The junior who is doing everything possible to get the internship that's vital for his or her career success is relentless. The basketball team that plays a suffocating defense for an entire game is relentless. Coach Nolan Richardson of the University of Arkansas called that defensive style 40 minutes of hell. And if you watch the NCAA, NCAA playoffs this year, the University of South Carolina played that way too. Another example comes from one of my favorite movies from some years ago. Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid, in the movie of that title, were bothered by a relentless tracker who was pursuing them, trying to bring them to justice. They kept saying to one another, to one another, who is that guy? As they tried yet again to lose the team of men following them. And they succeeded, finally, only by jumping off a cliff into a roaring river. And you'll recall the best line of that movie, Sundance doesn't want to jump off the cliff, and Cassidy asks him why. Sundance says, because I can't swim. Clearly, he should have gone to Berea. <laughs> Butch Cassidy laughs and tells him not to worry about it because the fall will probably kill him anyway. <laughs> anyway, they jump and survive and finally escape the relentless pursuer. Even when the connotations of relentlessness are grudgingly favorable, however, 
It's still hard to think of relentless as a fully positive characteristic because it really isn't. If we are being relentless, we are likely not taking a balanced approach to life and its various challenges. So today, let's look at two examples of commendable relentless behavior. First, we have that mother rabbit whose relentless pursuit of her bunny takes them through a stream, up a mountain, into a garden, into the air, across the sea, under the big top, and finally back home. The story is 75 years old, but young children never tire of hearing it and looking for the bunny in each picture, as you were doing too. The story still speaks truth about parental commitment and a mother's determined love. And by the way, don't forget that Mother's Day is coming up soon. <laughs> We see a second example in Psalm 139, where our loving God displays his relentless side too. He will hear every word we speak, box us in front and back, follow us as high as the heavens or as deep as hell. Or if we board an early flight, and that's what I think the King James Version means by the wings of the morning, or dive beneath the sea. No matter where we go, God's hand is on us to guide us. Even the darkness is no help if you're trying to hide from God. And even as we were being formed in our mother's womb, God was there, and for that reason are we fearfully and wonderfully made. Again, a lovely phrase from the King James Version. In the end, we simply have to give way to God's relentless pursuit. And the psalmist ceases all running away to acknowledge God's precious care and keeping. He says, How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I, am, when I awake, they are still with me. And you can just about hear God replying, Have a care. <laughs> so here we arrive at the redemption of relentlessness. These two examples should suggest to us that it's okay, or even more than okay, to be relentlessly tender, to care about someone enough never to give up. Well, that's two examples, but any sermon writer knows that in order to really make a point, you need to come up with a third. <laughs> Fortunately, there is one readily to hand for us here at Berea College because our school was founded by a relentless man. The Reverend John G. Fee, was threatened with death by hanging, by drowning, by gunshot, but nothing deterred him from the mission of living out the moral imperatives of his Christian belief and the conviction that God has made of one blood all peoples of the earth. And that to enslave or deny opportunity to anyone was contrary to God's wishes and our duty. During his time of leading the fledgling college, he was separated from his family for extended periods. He lost two sons to early deaths, and he stood up to angry mobs on more than one occasion. Even Cassius Clay, the wealthy man who supported him initially and provided Berea College with a grant of land that was to become the college and the town, came to think of him as too radical in his abolitionist views. Rather than direct confrontation, Clay favored a more gradual end to slavery by means of a constitutional amendment. Relentless people are hard to get along with, and Clay and Fee eventually had quite a falling out. But it is surely because of Fee's relentless desire to advance the cause of Christ by working for justice here in Kentucky that Berea College exists today and he attracted other men and women to that cause. You could say, really, that Berea College itself, because it has stayed true to those founding commitments, to whatever extent possible, remains relentlessly tender. So here are your powerful examples, united both in the level of the determination of a mother rabbit, of God, and of Reverend Fee, but also united in tenderness and love, a mother's love for a naughty bunny, a heavenly father's love and care for imperfect human beings, and an abolitionist's impartial love for all peoples of the earth. 
So that's how to be admirably relentless. And of course, if you're a student, I also want you to be relentless in finishing the work you have left this semester. Thank you. <laughs>